Hello friends, welcome to AI Flux. Today is another showstopper in terms of AI content. Uh, it's, it's getting to a point where it's hard for me to even keep up with what's being released. So Google today released image and video, high definition video generation with diffusion models. So basically a direct comp response and competitor to Meta's make a video. And I can confidently say this is better. It, it, it's still a little bit rough around the edges, as you can see what we're looking at here, but the clarity is much better. The geometry is better. And the thing that's most impressive to me is they seemingly have nailed or have really a really good start with furry, fluffy, volumetric things. Um, so it, just to point it out here, you have particles on the upper right, we have a sheep, and we have a panda driving a car. Uh, and then there are also some, volume, some purely volumetric bits, uh, like this ice cream, and then de high, highly detailed sort of fuzzy things with a lot of bokeh or a lot of tilt shift are also exceptionally hard. So, uh, and then I, I'm surprised they included this castle, because that, that's really the only lacking geometry of you know, a lot of this. So, and also the other big thing, uh, they have moving cameras, which is something that Meta's Make a Video, to my knowledge, did not have. There was multi-subject uh, embedded in environments. Uh, there was limited theming, but this, uh, this is really impressive. And by that, I mean it's taking a lot of features we've seen in a lot of direct to 3D bits and doing it in video in one pass, which is awesome. So again, it's called image and video. Uh, the delivery here, in my opinion, is better. It's, it's less of like a, hey, here's a technical blog post. It's just easier to take in. So this comes out of the Google research brain team. I know some people who do AI at Google. They're not directly on this team, but uh, one thing that has been changing a lot at Google recently is how they organize these teams structurally. So thinking less about the pure techniques of it, but um, looking at this more with a, with a more product focused angle, which is interesting because previously with Google, they've been pretty gung ho, just saying, we're gonna do a bunch of cool AI stuff and we're gonna see what sticks. And I think that is what will be interesting going forward to see how Google handles because my read on this is Google has a very scattered, uh, schizophrenic ethics strategy that to me just looks misguided and you, you just have to wonder what market they're really looking to capture with this and this is incredible it's incredible work right but the thing is um how do you gate this how do you deploy this within google in a way that does something reasonable because we just saw stadia was shut down that was a cool pretty impressive thing and people ended up kind of not using it so, and then I also, unfortunately, um, we have some other videos coming on, uh, coming out on the topic of AI safety and censorship. And this is interesting because even Spotify is acquiring companies that use AI to approach this concept of safety. And the more boring models, like, like Dolly to me is boring because it was made so safe. And Mid Journey gets closer um, to, I think, like a reasonable amount of creativity without getting too scared when someone gets too close to generating an AI titty. Uh, that said, um, they use diffusion models here. It's not explicitly stable diffusion, but it's a diffusion-based model, which seemed to be all the rage this October with uh, this new rush of research. So they show here, um, this is probably cherry pick, but you know, sprouts in the shape of text, Imogen coming out of a fairy tale book. They show the initial pass at very, very low resolution, and what they appear to be really showing here is scaling this without losing fidelity and having a bunch of edge artifacts come in and screw with what you're doing. Uh, here they say, image and video generates high resolution videos with cascaded diffusion models. The first step is to take an input text prompt, okay, encode it into textual embeddings with a dedicated encoder. A video diffusion model then generates a 16-frame video 
at low uh, frame rates. This is then followed by multiple, and this is really what they're showing here, uh, temporal super resolution and spatial super resolution models to upsample. So I think it's cool that upsampling and how you do that reasonably is becoming more of the, of the area of innovation than just saying years of workflow that ends up making a thing that looks cool. Uh, here, they're basically, they're very proud of the fact that you can scale this. Um, they show here that it's using the video unit architecture to, cache, to capture spatial fidelity. Um, I have not had discrete information provided on this, but I would bet that some of the video processing they're using in terms of what they're calling spatial fidelity, I would bet this is pretty similar, or, or that this has been reused somewhere internally at YouTube to figure out uh, what's on a screen and if it's safe or should be taken down. Or more recently, um, there's even been work in the private sector with this. And by private, I just mean not in huge tech companies, uh, which comes to serving better ads based on understanding what's in video in real time. So specifically live streams, but also content that's just been put up and not relying on user-based tagging. Uh, now what's cool, and I think it, you see this in papers, but you really have to dig it out because researchers, um, you, they say they're very honest people and everything they're doing is based in data and theory. So, so you'd think you'd see more of this, but I really like it when teams deliberately state what a model can't do. So here um, they say, Generative modeling has made tremendous progress, especially in recent text-to-image models. Image and video is another step forward in generative modeling capabilities. Advancing text-to-video AI systems, yada, yada, uh, Video generative models can be used to positively impact society. Okay, that's great. Um, okay, so this is a response to what the White House has put out. We have a video coming on this. Uh, however, these generative models may also be misused, for example, to generate fake, hateful, or explicit harmful content. Now that's, that's a very mixed bag. Uh, we have taken, oh, so this is kind of disappointing. Um, th this is, this is lame. We have taken multiple steps to minimize these concerns. For example, in internal trials, we apply input text prompt filtering, lame, and output video content filtering, uh, yikes. However, there are several important safety and ethical challenges. God, this is so, this is so dumb. Image and video and it's frozen T5, XO, text encoder were trained on problematic data. Okay, so... They're saying they just used it, and the, what's terrifying is that's more interesting. Like, why why should Google have to say what is dangerous? Um, that's that's really funny. Uh, so an example of this in Dolly is you cannot generate images of Joe Rogan. I wanted to make um, a Joe Rogan mushroom like as a joke and basically any famous names, it will not let you do anything with that. Uh, Mid Journey will, so give, give Mid Journey your money, uh, not, not Google. And then uh, here's the authors. Um, you can read this. Uh, yeah, there is a link, a link to this and I will also link to their paper in the description below. Curious if you think this kind of filtering is necessary or if it's really taking away from what AI can do. Uh, as always, please like and subscribe. We're trying to grow the channel. And if you have any suggestions for how we can improve this, um, please let us know. Have a good day.